Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture on globalization and hybridization in India. This lecture is a part of your paper on media and globalization. This lecture deals with the process of hybridization brought about by the forces of globalization. Globalization has been a pivotal role in bringing about a far-reaching transformation within the different domains of the society, be it social, economic and cultural. This lecture also focuses on the nature of hybridization that has emerged not simply in terms of culture but also occupation, lifestyle, family structure where media has played a central role in changing the attitudes and perceptions of the people towards the style of conducting themselves within the urban spaces in India. Understanding Hybridization Globalization has been an important process responsible for the advent of global culture. With globalization, the concept of hybridity has become a new facet of the debate about global culture within the developing society. Hybridity has been understood as the opening up of an alternative space within which different culture, cultural elements encounter and transform each other. It particularly means an intermixing of different cultural forms together due to globalization where each form instead of dominating the other tries to assimilate with the other and creates an alternative space for people engagement. Hybridization helped in altering the boundaries of nation, community, ethnicity or class and presented a kaleidoscope of collective experience in motion. This process of intermixing of different local aspects with the global aspects to create a hybrid form of understanding is what hybridization denotes. Within globalization, hybridization has become a neo-colonial discourse that is complicit with the transnational capitalism. The histories of the hybridization of metropolitan cultures show that hybridization has been taking place all along. It has not been a feature that was unique only to certain societies. The process of hybridization was an ongoing condition of all human cultures which contained no zones of purity because they all underwent continuous process of transculturation. For instance, in the case of India, during the post-colonial society, the urban spaces were not commonly seen as a kind of developed spaces which had segregated different cultural communities. Rather, it was perceived as a realm which was appreciated for its anonymity. Urban spaces at that time did involve a degree of hybridity of different cultural forms. However, they were not visible in terms of frequency. The lack of their absence was due to the right social structure and norms which restricted the assimilation of different cultural forms. For example, a Hindu bride and a Muslim groom did exist prior to globalization, but they kept these newer forms of identities hidden in order to avoid any form of conflict. Globalization in that sense was an important contributory factor for formulating a space for acceptance of both the local and global cultures. As a result, post-globalization, India saw a rise in the number of hybrid cultural forms where individuals preached both the Hindu Vedas and message of Christianity. The evidences of hybridization became far more prominent and abundant post-globalization within the Indian society. The transformational changes seen in the case of India could be classified in terms of cultural identity, language, occupation, marriage, family structure, taste and preferences, rituals and practices, media, education, lifestyle, consumerism and consumption. Hybridization in India did not happen out of sudden change within the existing structure of the society. There were important preconditions which made it possible for the process to take place within India. 
The first condition was that despite distinct cultural trends within India, there were certain key elements which were common to different cultures. It was so because most of the distinct culture forms were seen as subsets of the dominant cultures. This led socialization of such cultural forms. As a result, with the growth in the levels of the tolerance and acceptance, the conditions became favorable for such cultural forms to coexist with each other. The condition was that India, unlike other societies, was not extreme in terms of advocating the dominant culture upon different ethnic communities. There has always been a process of debate and negotiation involved. Such aspects also led to initiation of hybridization as greater dialogues led to greater understanding towards the distinct aspects of other cultural forms. As a result, two or more cultures which shared common aspects became favorable for assimilation and thereby became responsible for the creation of hybrid forms of cultures within the society. The third condition was that globalization helped in fluid transmission of different cultural information. As a result, people not only became self-aware self -aware about their respective cultural identities, but also began to develop interest towards other cultural identities. In this whole scenario, the deficits which were present within one specific cultural form was replaced by the positive aspects of other cultures. It was so because members of such cultural identities began to compare and analyze as to what could be the best positioning for them within the society. Keeping that aspect in mind, they began to adopt the positive traits of other cultures and began intermixing them with theirs. As a result, India witnessed a series of complex hybrid cultures. A prominent example can be Buddhism or Feminism, which were practiced along with other cultural practice at the same time. Another interesting aspect for the rise of hybridization was the fact that with globalization there emerged a degree of growing interdependence. For this interdependence to be addressed holistically, participation of people of distinct culture communities was pivotal. This could only happen through hybridization and tolerance towards other cultural forms. That is why we can observe that in terms of labor force, there is diversity in participation instead of concentration and dominance of one specific community. Although one can argue concentration in terms of region, however, the region in itself was touched by hybridization, which in turn made the whole process a lot more pluralistic in nature. Another important aspect of hybridization worth exploring was that this process generally involved the assimilation of cultures which already held dominant positions within the society. If we try to compare the global cultural forms with the traditional tribal cultural forms, we can clearly observe that most of the tribal cultures were dominated by the modern global cultures or by the intermix of national and global cultures. As a result of which, in order for such microcultural forms to exist or sustain their positions within the society, they had no option but to intermix with the dominant local cultures of that specific regions. It was so because they lacked the sufficient support and access to resources. As a result in India, hybridization did not exactly lead to the sustenance of alternative cultural forms. It only provided space and scope for the dominant local cultures to blossom within the society and assimilate with the other dominant cultural form at, at both national and global levels. As for the microcultures, they were highly endangered and even in some instances mostly became extinct due to the hegemony of global culture. For example, the disappearance of distinct forms of folk culture and tradition. 
in India, we also witnessed the process of Sanskritization and religious conversion to a degree, not because of better access to socio-economic resources, but also due to the fear of becoming a minority which would not be recognized at all due to the hegemony of the dominant cultural forms. On the whole, hybridization did have a positive impact on the Indian society as it brought both the global and local cultures together and helped in the formulation of alternative forms as well as global consciousness of distinct local cultures of India. For instance, Buddhism, Sikhism and Hinduism garnered a lot of attention and appreciation from the foreign societies. It in turn has helped in creating spaces within the foreign societies for such cultures grow and spread across the international borders. Even the global acceptance of yoga can be another classic case to legitimize the above argument. Hybridization Environment of India In the case of India, let us firstly understand hybridization in terms of language. Most of the metropolitan cities of India were observed as the herbs for the migrated workforce. People from diverse parts of India came to settle in the metropolitan cities for the purpose of pursuing a quality occupation, lead a quality of life and escape the old traditional norms and regulations which govern the standard of living of the people within the rural society. This process of migration not only led to the assimilation of different workforce within a single uniform space but also contributed towards the cross-cultural exchange between different communities. As a result, a multilingual form of society emerged in India which held a major significance in conjunction with current processes of economic internationalization into the major forms of languages. Language here was categorized as a code that performed a series of ideal functions such as informing, stating and questioning from which a series of grammatical rules could be deducted thereby creating different scopes for the transmission of information across the diverse set of populations in India. For instance, the emergence of English, English plus Hindi not only helped in making communication easy with the locals but also created a considerable amount of consciousness towards the global language which was English. The other important change witnessed in terms of hybridization was that people of different cultural communities began to hold more than dual identities. As a result, this process enabled a strong web of networks where people of different backgrounds would come together and socialize on the basis of commonalities and that they shared. Therefore, a working woman in the Indian society would share an identity of being a feminist or a Buddhist or even an environmentalist at the same time, where all these three identities would function in a cross-assimilated manner. A major contributory change brought about by globalization and hybridization was in terms of occupation. With the advent of globalization, both manufacturing and tertiary sectors witnessed exponential growth in India. However, in the case of tertiary sector, a new range of services emerged. One classic case was the emergence of business process outsourcing, that is BPOs. Other similar such services emerging in India were event management services, public relations and even creative form of advertising. All these services provided enhanced set of personalized expertise which involved both the traits of global and local cultures.
It was an important process as it helped in the better catering of both the local and international target groups and at the same time developing awareness. Even in the case of media, globalization played a pivotal role in the exchange of culture and flow of diverse set of information across different countries through news broadcast, television programming, new technologies, film, music, etc. TV programs showcased a hybrid form of culture. The existing trend in different television markets was that global content was getting localized. The Western formats were observed, adopted and tuned to produce a Hindi or Mandarin version. Star TV, which in 1993 was bought by Rupert Murdoch, realized that its mainly US originated programming was only reaching a tiny all the wealthy urban audience. They therefore started adding Hindi subtitles to Hollywood films broadcast on its 24-hour channel and dubbing popular US soaps and into Hindi. ZTV, India's first private Hindi language satellite channel, broke television taboos by broadcasting programs about relationships and horoscopes. Music videos too have been exhibiting the trend of modifying old Indian film songs into newer pop versions. For instance, Alisha Chenoy's Made in India song was a pioneer not in terms of its depiction of themes of nationality and globality but also because of its role in pushing the sales of a pop album to that of successful film music albums. The implications of this narrative was that it emerged in the early 90s and preceded most other music videos discourses about the nation in a global context. Another example can be the advertisement of Visa credit card revolving around an old Rajasthani ritual where caged birds are released for good luck. The more birds released from cages, the more good luck the person for whom it was done could be expected to beget. Here, Visa exhibited not only interest in Indian rituals but also its eagerness to adopt them. If the little girl who wants to release five birds for her brother can be taken to represent Indians, then she realizes her desires thanks to the benevolence of an understanding white man. Visa showed the Indian viewers that the company would help Indian realize their desires in their own ways. The Visa advertisement reviving an ancient Indian custom bringing luck was created so as to not only position the product and service in the Indian milieu but to also show it was a part of the Indian cultural ethos. Although hybrid programming was introduced with private television programming in the early 90s, the magnification of such hybridity on other spaces of expression in the city reinforced its presence on television. Film-based programming, by far the most popular genre on Indian television, represented by such shows as Philips Top 10 ZTV and Boogie Woogie Sony TV, changed its format to include film video countdowns and dance and singing competitions. From the past 10 years, American program formats are being converted into Indian shows, resulting in such programs as Good Morning India, From Good Morning America, On Doordarshan, Crime Stoppers on Doordarshan Metro and India's Most Wanted on ZTV, both based on cops. Star Plus, Konbanega Karolpati from ABC who wants to be a millionaire consistently topped the ratings every week of its telecast. Beside these, we also have Indian Idol from American Idol and Big Boss from Big Brother and so on. For youth, a separate set of channels was also there like MTV, Channel V and Fashion TV etc. 
Basically, in the globalized world, there are more choices, different tastes and much enlarged field for exposure is available, where one could fit oneself wherever he or she would want. Initially, the main focus on television was to make Indians aware of the outside world. But from 2008, there were again programs which were completely based on Indian problems and cultures like Balika Vadhu, Na Ana Is Des Lato, etc. These were not meant only for people living in India, but for the people living outside India as television in India was inextricably tied to its local and national cultures. A majority of programs on television were reflective of the diversity of their audience's interest and their cultural values. In a geographically and culturally diverse country with 18 official languages and a multitude of dialects, television has played a vital role in reflecting the interest of its society. A majority of Indians prefer their own music, dance and art. They like to see themselves their lives, their concerns and their experiences reflected on the screen. It can be concluded from what we have learnt in this section that globalization today cannot be equated with westernization alone. With the availability of multi-channel global television, non-western cultures are being equally imposed on people almost everywhere in the world. Just as Western cultural programs and Hollywood films are being consumed internationally, non-Western cultural programs and Bollywood films are being consumed everywhere as well. To a great extent, the television industry in India is going both global and local. With the availability of multi-channel, global television and the development of new technologies, India is producing and exporting its own programs. It is focusing on the diversity on the audience's interest and cultural values and wherever relevant it is modifying the western programs to suit its own taste and interest. Moreover, with present day deregulation and privatization policies, India is joining hands with multinationals and reaching out more and more with local and national content to multiple audiences. In this lecture, we try to develop a clear understanding of the process of transition brought about within the Indian society through globalization and hybridization. We also dealt with the question as to how hybrid forms of culture have emerged and became aware of their nature of impact on the Indian society. From the set of arguments put forwarded in this lecture, the following conclusions can be derived. One, Hybridization in India existed long before the process of globalization. Its impact, however, was more prominent during the post-globalization period as globalization enabled the further growth of hybrid cultural forms. Hybridization proved beneficial to only the dominant forms of culture. Hybridization did not provide the optimal space for other local cultures to grow. Number three. Hybridization not only helped in the transformation of global cultures into local, but was also a key parameter in altering different local cultures into becoming global. Thank you.